ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball, Princeton and Rutgers, brought to you by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. And by Howard Johnson. Where are you going this fall? Go anywhere and get in on the fall sale at Howard Johnson. Call 1-800-I-GO-HOJO. Welcome back once again, everyone, to Piscataway, New Jersey, where the Princeton Tigers have a 25-19 lead over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Mike Gorman, along with Clark Kellogg, you are not supposed to be able to go into the other guy's building before a packed, hostile crowd and dictate tempo, but Princeton has here today. They really have. They've controlled the tempo from the start simply because they've executed their half-court offense well, and they've been stingy at the defensive end. Let's take a look at some highlights from that first half. First, offensively for Princeton, they take about 30 off the clock, and then they get a good shot and this is a good shot by Kit Miller. Excellent floor spacing. Look at the spacing here. Everybody moving, the ball's moving, and they're able to get backdoor cut because everybody is spread out. The defense is spread out. Look how flat-footed Rutgers is too defensively. Exactly. As much as I like up-tempo basketball, you have to appreciate this. Nice execution offensively in the sweeping hook, a shot that we don't see very much of anymore by Kit Miller. And as you pointed out at the end of the half, Rutgers needs to attack the press to score. No question about it. Anytime a team presses you, you have to be thinking score. Penetrate, find somebody down underneath for the layup. Here, Carter, with excellent penetration, finds Brent Dabb for the way you should attack pressure defense. And I had a quick look at the numbers from the first half. 44% shooting for Rutgers. Free throw is not really a big deal. Neither are rebounds. Turnover is just about even. Three-point field goal is pretty big as three of nine shooting has gotten Princeton up early. 27 seconds per possession for the Princeton Tigers. And Rutgers averaging 74 points a game. Only four points in the last seven minutes of that first half. Let's see if they can turn it around here second half. Keith Hughes has got a way to go to get to 19. Only able to get up six shots. He and Dabbs combined for 12 of the Rutgers 19. But I really think Rutgers, and not to take anything away from Princeton because they've executed their game plan beautifully here in the first half, but Rutgers almost has to turn this into a game at the park. In other words, they've got to make it a helter-skelter affair. And it's going to have to start defensively. But I think they need, any time they get a defensive forward, to really look for the transition opportunity. It is Miller, Mooney, Jackson, Leftwich, and Eastwick on the floor. That's Eastwick getting inside to Miller, seven on the shot clock. He leans in for two. So they eat 33 seconds and score. Kit Miller knows how to play inside. He's not going to jump over you. And he's got a wide, strong body. And he's slippery in there. Biggest lead, and Miller comes up with a steal. Princeton looking a fast break. Well, <laughs> that might be stretching it a bit. Not really. And a double dribble is called. And that got Pete Carrill's attention. <laughs> Look at Pete. <laughs> the professor. Comfortably attired. That's Duncan. Jones down in the corner. Hughes puts it up oh, and draws a foul. And Eastwick now with four. Matt Eastwick has had a hard time staying out of the way here today. Well, if there's an enforcer on the Princeton squad, Eastwick comes as close as anybody. Tough, tough shot here. Little incidental body contact. Eastwick can't believe it. Tough, tough shot by Keith Hughes. There's Pete Carrillo giving Eastwood. See, Eastwood got in trouble by not stopping Hughes from getting to that spot initially. Tried to play defense after Hughes had the offensive spot. Marquard back in. Puts it in the middle of Miller over to Jackson, who had a good long rest at the end of that first half. 27-22, Princeton by five. Could be a key series because Princeton had the ball with the eight-point lead looking to take it to 10 and Kit Miller turns it over and Rutgers able to get it down to five. These guys get up 10 on you. It's like most teams being up 25. That's right. That's right. You have to double it just because of the way they play. And then that sense of panic sets in for the opposition. And Princeton able to thrive on that. 
Rutgers settling into the zone defense. Yeah. Fresh 45 for Princeton. Which is really a calculated gamble when you play this team in zone defense when you have the ability possibly to play them man to man. Because they're a pretty good outside shooting team, although they've not shot it as well this year as they have in the past. Jackson cuts through, Leftwich comes back out, and Jackson goes to the near side. Leftwich obviously has decided they're going to have to shoot over. And Pete Jackson, number 11, looked for him to take a shot. Marquardt made a three in the first half. Mooney is also capable. Miller could be the odd guy out. Jackson in a little trouble. Now they reverse it. Ten on the shot clock. Left which a rare shot. It's taken down by Hughes. Greg Carter looks to answer. Duncan launches one. Like a little penetration. The pseudo penetration. Beat your man by one step and find the teammate for the open jump shot. And the rock comes alive here at Rutgers. So run has him back to within two, and the fans calling for the defense. And Princeton, very patient against the zone. Leftwich aware of the shot clock. It's at seven. Miller pops out. Mark Wild will have to take it and hits a three. Oh my. You know, I really think the fans need to get on their feet for defense with about eight seconds left on the shot clock. <laughs> because otherwise, they're going to get tired with Princeton moving the ball around. And again, an open spot-up jump shot for a good shooter. Hughes flashing to the middle. A little turnaround. Won't go down. Kept alive on the baseline by Carter. He bounces it in off the back of Marquardt out of bounds. I like the way Craig Carter plays. He's involved always. We've got an official timeout. 16 minutes straight up to go in the game. Princeton still ahead by five. Lots of basketball coming up Tuesday night here on ESPN. Number 18, Kentucky. Rick Pitino's club will take on Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers. That one coming at you at 7.30. Then my partner, Clark Kellogg, will be there for the Atlantic 10 battle between Penn State and Temple. And if you're still with us, Texas, number 25, takes on Cal Santa Barbara Tuesday night at midnight. A triple header on ESPN. Rutgers ball trailing by five. Jones and Carter exchange outside. Duncan takes Boy, the three. Leftwich is defending dabs inside, and they miss him. And it's either going to be an offensive foul or an out of bounds. Either way, it's going to Princeton. I believe they did call the offensive foul. Not good recognition there. Dab flashing inside had Leftwich eclipsed. They didn't find him. We've said this before, Mike, but when the game is this slow, every empty possession is huge. You almost get the feeling the Prince is going to keep doing this, and before the fans and really some of the Rutgers players are aware of it, the game's going to be over. Exactly, it's a slip away from them. Lost opportunity. Let's see if they can get a transition hoop. Jones. Good job by Princeton to get back. Dab skips it to Duncan. Dab trying to get position low on Marquardt. Hughes comes baseline. Hughes wants to take a good feed for Dabs. He finds a way for two. Eight for Dabs. Back to a three-point game. Rutgers content to stay in the zone. which is going to considerably shorten this game. It will shorten the game and put tremendous pressure on their half-court offense because it's tough to run out of a zone defense. It's amazing the mind 
games that Princeton can play on you. Rutgers is only down three here, yet I'm sure the Rutgers kids feel they're way behind in this game. They feel a sense of urgency. Yep. Leftwich left open. Long with the jump shot. Hughes made him change it. Here comes Duncan. Rutgers can get to one or tie with a three. Oh, picked off by Jackson. Again, a careless trip for Rutgers. Jackson, good look for Marquard. Won't go. Pulled down by Dab. See, I just don't understand why Rutgers upon defensive boards, although they haven't handled the ball in the open court well, that may be part of the reason for pulling it back. And maybe they want to try to throw it inside to Dabs and Hughes. Dabs in and out on the turnaround. Jones sneaking in, but Jimmy Burr's got a foul. Keith Hughes came over the top. Tough break for Dabs, had the position. We see the turnover. Rutgers with 11. They've only got 10 hoops. Mm -hmm. Charles Weiler, the freshman for Rutgers, is up at the scorer's table. He'll get his chance to come in and see if he can make any sense of this for Rutgers. Rockwell. He only took a shot in the lane and reverse it. Jackson wide open. You do not do it any better than that. That is great ball movement. Get it to your best three-point shooter behind the arc. Picture perfect. The upset there, Clark, was he took it with 25 still on the shot clock. But it was just too good a shot to pass up. I mean, after that excellent ball movement inside, outside, top, wing, knock it down. Snap flashing through. Marquardt will be called on the reach. Third on Marquardt. Here comes Charles Weiler into the game. And Dabs will sit down. This is Dabs' fourth game. He missed the first two because of an ankle injury. Wearing a special brace on that right ankle. Told me before the game he's about 80%. And probably still a week or so away from being at 100%. Rutgers got a fresh 45 in the clock. They're down six. Only 13 minutes to go in the game. Duncan, spin move, tough shot. Picked off by Kenshin, who's back in. Well, he really can't afford. He knew he wasn't going coast to coast, didn't he? <laughs> no doubt about it. He really can't afford four shots against Princeton. Because you're only going to get so many. Rutgers is going to be forced to come out of the zone defense. They're in a man-to-man. -man yeah. Game. They're going to be forced to play a little more aggressively. I just got to say, man -to -man. more aggressive man-to-man -man than we're seeing, especially right. on the guards. That's where it has to start out front. But Earl Duncan bothered by a sprained ankle lately. Mark Ward short with the three. And really with this unit, this is not Rutgers' best defensive team. They even throw Mike Jones in there. Hughes flashing through, gets his own rebound, won't go. Tipped long, back to Duncan, stolen by Jackson, foul on Duncan. And you won't say this too often, but a Princeton player out quick to Rutgers player of the ball there. Well, I think Duncan was just waiting for the ball to come back to him instead of attacking the basketball. And we've got a timeout, 11.54 to go. Bobby Wenzel not happy. He shouldn't be, he's down six. Princeton by six, and the Tigers continue to play their way. Excellent ball movement. The pass that's often overlooked is the pass before the assist. Inside out. Now, Henshin is going to make the pass that leads to the assist because he kicks it immediately to Leftwich, who's able to make the assist to Jackson. But if Henshin hesitates on that initial pass, then Jackson's unable to get the open shot. Excellent ball movement. After a quick start in the second half, Rutgers only three points in the last five minutes and 19 seconds. think Rutgers has to turn it into an alley fight, make it a helter-skelter wild game, but they're on their heels, and that's what Princeton does to you. They get a lead, and you're scared to go out and press. Always weary of the back, leery of the back cut. Henshin and Jones tie out. Oh, excuse me, that's Smith. Dale Smith. Wenzel wants him. He wants him to an intentional foul 
He's, I don't think he can expect to get that one. That's uh, that's reaching a bit, Bob. Now here's the steal, and then there's the grab. Just a little tangle, a little do -si do Inside, dabs, converts. Let's see if Mike Jones can be a defensive catalyst for him now. One, two, two pressure. You think Jones and Smith and Carter. Right, this is the unit that if Rutgers is going to apply pressure defensively, this is the unit that would get it done. But one of the things that happens with Princeton is they, they spread you out so much and they bring your big guy away from the hole. So your front, your, your backcourt people may be a little scared to put the heat on. Tension top of the key, Jackson. Now Leftwich finds Marquardt. Miller skips it back out. They left Jackson alone. He makes some pay. Well, if you're going to double, you don't leave him. Eight for Jackson. The lead seven again. Ten and a half to go. This one's slipping away from the Scarlet Knight. I just don't see enough aggressiveness and activity. Smith finds Savage, who lost it on the way up. Miller got a hand in there. Turnaround won't go. Savage the board. And he traveled with it. Well, I don't know. Rutgers getting a little frustrated. They've been inside and they've not gotten fouls called. And but, from, from my angle, I've not seen whether or not those have actually been fouls, but nonetheless, I sense some frustration on the part of the Scarlet Knights. What you often see happen, Clark, in, in a situation like this is instead of getting aggressive, they tend to get wild. Excellent point, Mike. Backdoor cut. Henshin couldn't handle the pass. Here comes Carter. Carter, a little pull up in the lane. Won't go for him. Volleyball rebound taken down by Jackson. The opportunities apparently there, but the empty trips continue to haunt Rutgers. Miller, who has been very quiet in the second half, spins on Savage outside. Henshin looking inside for Miller. He wants to work on Savage. 11 on the shot clock. Jackson, a little cut to the hoop, won't go. Rebound, nice strong one in there by Dabs. Savage thought about three. Takes a tougher shot than he had originally, but good position. Mike Jones coming up with the hoop. Six thirty-one, five-point game with eight and a half to play. Marquardt was open for a flash on the cut. Now he comes high. That's foul. Savage went down. Intentional foul and a good call by Jerry Donahue. Savage went down. His man tried to cut away from him. He grabbed it. So Savage ran into a pick. Felt like he got clipped. And then in his frustration, just tried to tackle. I don't know if it's Henson or Marquardt. Keith Hughes is going to come back in and Savage will go out. Well, there's Savage at the top of your screen. And there's the, there's the intentional foul right there as he was picked off by Henson. He hit the deck and then reached in and grabbed Matt Henson. Henshin makes the first, pushes it back to a six-point Princeton loop. You know, you look at this Princeton squad, you realize these guys are not on athletic scholarship. They recognize that they're the underdog. A lot of times that they go out of the conference, but and I think that's a rallying point for this unit this team. Sure. We just saw that interesting statistic. 33 passes. That's an average of 11 per possession. And that wears you out. Oh, As a defensive team, it frustrates you and it wears you down emotionally. You can never get anything going. Anything to feed the frenzy of the fans. 
Miller spins in the lane, sweeps with the hook. Mill and they choose for the rebound. But under eight minutes to go in the game, as Princeton continues to eat the clock every time they get possession. Duncan trying to make the move on Jackson, just powers his way in. Short with the jumper. Dabs there for the foul. I like the play by Duncan, though. He's strong enough to back in. He just needs to make sure he's under control, ready to pass as well as shoot once he gets into the paint. 38-33, Princeton. Miller cut to Jackson. He tracks it down. I thought he double dribbled. So there's a few fans along the baseline. Into Miller. Back out to Marquardt. Jackson 15 on the shot clock. Under seven minutes now to go in the game. Jackson's open. Hits another one. Mike Jones got sealed behind the pick. He's got to stay in his chest, obviously. Because when he has time, mark him up. Princeton's not only eating the clock, they're trading three for two. Excellent. That's right. Kyle's going to be called on Marquardt down in the corner as he now picks up his fourth. He and Eastwick with four apiece for Princeton. And I think an indication, Clark, of, of what you've been saying is something we'll discuss in a minute. 6.38 to go in the game. 41-33. Eight-point Princeton lead. 6.38 to go. Time becoming a factor, and Princeton still does what they want. Kit Miller leads his team in scoring, rebounds, and assists. But how about the assists without the ball? The pick there as he catches Mike Jones with the little brush pick. Jones trying to go behind, and with a shooter like Sean Jackson, who's knocked down three triples this half, he must go through that screen as opposed to trying to sneak behind. Give the shooter too much time. Go over the top, rather. Carter's on the floor with Hughes, Dabs, Duncan, and Smith. Mike, you made a point during our break about the Rutgers team only no player has more than one foul which is an indicator of a couple of things but the most important is that they haven't really been aggressive Not going out yet. Carter takes it in traffic a little pull up won't go battle for the boards and that's going to be a travel as Miller went down with the ball so Rutgers gets it back with 6.15 to go down 8 what I think Rutgers has to do now is just try to put it on the floor and get to the basket. Try to draw some fouls. Try to stretch this game out. Because if they don't get to the free throw line and stop the clock, this game is going to mm -hmm. be over in about 10 minutes. Right, before they realize it is. Duncan's little turnaround goes down. Duncan with 10. Dabs has 12. Hughes, 7. But the Tigers lead by 6. Goes down low to Miller. Kicks it back out, Henshin. There's Miller trying to set that pick to Sean Jackson up top. They got a mismatch down low. Nice job by Miller using the basket. And a technical foul on Brent Dabbs for slamming the basketball down. And it's really coming apart here for the Scarlet Knights. Carter caught in a mismatch and then a nice move here by Kit Miller. There's what resulted in the technical by Brent Dabb. He was also whistled for the personal foul. And we mentioned earlier in this telecast that earlier during this game that Rutgers needed to get on top. I can't recall that they've had a lead. I don't think they have. I don't think they have. Miller missing the shot on the personal, but Jackson now will shoot the technical foul shot. And don't forget on Sunday night, the Bears and the Lions on Sunday night NFL here on ESPN, the black and blue division. And Jackson, who still hasn't missed a free throw this year, has 13 on the game, and Princeton a 10-point lead with five and a half to go. And the ball. Yep. I 
mentioned earlier, Princeton an excellent free throw shooting team. So if Rutgers gets aggressive. And as we talked about earlier too, Miller can come out and handle the basketball. It's gonna be very tough for Dabs to cover him in the open floor. Exactly. the ball they got Keith Hughes holding Matt Eastwood and now the, the Scarlet Knights only one foul away from sending the Tigers to the strike and Pete Carrill wouldn't diagram it any differently than it's transpired here today there you see he's got the little smirk he just enjoyed himself over there in the kind of an afternoon at the Scalaway and Princeton takes a timeout as Rutgers had some good defensive pressure set up. 5.19 to go. The Tigers of Princeton lead by 10. Big doubleheader coming up on Wednesday night here on ESPN. Doug Smith will lead Missouri against Illinois at 7.30. And then at 9.30, can Princeton do to UNLV what they're doing to Rutgers? I know you're all saying no, they got no shot. But people said that against Georgetown, against Arkansas. <laughs> we'll see what happens when they take on the defending national champions next Wednesday night. Hughes all over Eastwood. It's the kind of defense you would have expected out of Rutgers about an hour and a half ago. Maybe a little too late now. Smith looking for a travel, but got himself a foul. Team foul, second on Daryl Smith. Daryl Smith and Keith Hughes now the only two Rutgers players with two fouls. So the Scarlet Knights have a lot of fouls to give if they want to give them. As Jones comes back in and Smith goes to the bench. As Bach pointed out, Princeton shoots as a team 80 percent from the line. This guy had a career high 20 last year's game against Rutgers. We crack the five-minute mark. It's a ten-point game. The thing that Princeton doesn't get a whole lot of credit for is they're forcing Rutgers, even though quick shot there, and it turns out to be an air ball. Eastwood the rebound. They've been Eastwood forcing. Looks like he may have walked. Mike. Yeah, I thought so too. They have been forcing Rutgers though to hold the ball 25 seconds themselves to get a shot off, and that's not Rutgers' game at all. It really isn't. And Princeton, like you say under-recognized as a defensive ball club. They're pretty good defensively. Yeah. And the rack stifled, baffled, confused. This guy, hands on his hips, he's like, what? <laughs> Leftwich with his first point of the game, and Bobby Wenzel, that's kind of a half-hearted wave that's coming out of the fans behind the backboard there. I guess that's one way of saying it. No electricity here today. Princeton has blown a fuse for the night. Oh, great play there, and it's out of bounds. It's going back to Princeton. Eastwick with the block and then threw it off one of the Rutgers players. Watch this. Excellent anticipation, and Jones unable to handle that hot ball coming at him. Princeton with possession, a double-digit lead. And there, Keith Hughes, the quick hands, slapping it off the leg of Eastwood. The ball will go back to Rutgers. Pete Carrill is literally laughing over there, giving the official a hard time. Kind of waves the program at him. To the point you made just a moment ago, Mike, about Rutgers milking the clock for shots. I mean, that's playing right into Princeton's hands. And has played into their hands all afternoon. Under four minutes now as Carter tries to get up quickly defensively. Jones jumps in looking for the steal. Princeton now set in the half court. I mean, when you take 20 seconds on your own end, you know they're going to take 30 on there. So you're looking at only a shot every minute. Left which Nice feed from Kit Miller. The clinic. The Princeton faithful who are here are loving this. It's a clinic. Miller with six assists in the game. Duncan front rims a three. Jackson jumps in for the rebound. Gets it out to Leftwich. Princeton by 12 and the ball with 3.20 to go. And the 
again, you just cannot say enough about Pete Carrill and what he does with this club. Look at that. Look at that. Henshin with the layup going back door. Rutgers calls a timeout. 3.08 to go. Princeton, 51. Rutgers, 37. Fifty-one thirty-seven. Princeton by 14. Many of the faithful leaving, and they're all going out the back door, just like Princeton. <laughs> and Princeton, Lord, Princeton is back door and Rutgers to death. Look at the spacing. Craig Carter mesmerized by the ball and Kit Miller, and that leaves Henson all alone on the backside. And they lift everybody else up. See, they lift everybody else up so there's no backside or weak side help. And the Princeton faithful having a ball here. They have been more vocal and have had a whole lot more to cheer about and about the other 7,500. We talked about points in the paint and the size and strength advantage that Rutgers had going in on paper. And Princeton has gotten 20 points in the paint compared to 14 by Rutgers. Just when you thought Rutgers was going to make some sort of last-ditch effort, Princeton just comes back and blasts him with a 10-2 run. Smith feeds underneath and Jones gets two. Six points for Jones. After which able to spin his way into the fourth court. Again, that matchup between Miller and Dabbs. Henson takes it on Smith. Left which comes back for the ball. And they have taken 25 seconds off the shot clock. Goes to Miller with 10 on the shot clock. Back out to Eastwood. Up the Henshin. Got time for a three. He buries it. Nine for Henshin. 15 point Princeton lead. Duncan leans in and gets fouled by Henshin. And Pete Curiel gets up. For the first time I've seen Pete upset this afternoon at Henshin for committing that foul. Well, he doesn't want that clock to be stopped. Princeton nowhere near over the limit, though, and the foul was called before Duncan got the shot off. Earl just catches and fires. A rebound by Eastwood. Duncan has really struggled with his shot coming into today's game, only shooting 28% from the floor. And hasn't done much to improve that here today. is given up by Mike Jones, but it's given up after Princeton's taken 23 seconds off the clock. You have to think that Rutgers they really just went flat all afternoon and recognizing that Princeton is an 80% free throw shooting team. They're just content to lay back and not commit the foul. Just had a note handed to me that we couldn't hear it, but the Princeton fans in the back have been chanting, we want Vegas. Well, we gotta get him next Wednesday night. Hughes throws up the air ball. Just total frustration now. Painfully frustrating for Rutgers. Just in case any of the running Rebs are listening, it was the Princeton fans that were chanting, we want Vegas, not the Princeton players who were <laughs> chanting, we want Vegas. 119 now to go in the game. 54-39, a very, very impressive win by the undefeated Tigers of Princeton here this afternoon. Miller, again, blocked down low this time as Smith came and helped out. Duncan trying to dish it off, finds Hughes for two. But I do not see the Rutgers bench jumping up and calling any timeouts. I do not see any intentional fouls. Juicy layups. The Tigers are making most of them. And as we count it down now, as we hit the 35 second clock, we've got a foul on the drive. We're going to put Earl Duncan on the line. Might have been Sean Jackson who committed that. Weiler comes in and Dabs goes out. Thank you. 
A very depressed Rutgers bench. Unable to get much, if anything, going. Keith Hughes checks out. Hughes unofficially sits down with nine. How about this crowd at the rack? They usually get a workout when they show up. They'll have to go jump on the Stairmaster to get a sweat going today. Princeton kept them out of it just about for the duration. Duncan makes his free throws. Boy, this is ugly. When you talk about from Rutgers' standpoint. You don't often see Rutgers just get it handed to him at home, and that's what's happened here. Weiler goes up and gets an offensive board and puts it back in. But with under 20 seconds to go, the Princeton Tigers remain undefeated. And they have yet to play a home game. They'll be awesome when they get down to Jadwin, then, won't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll have a lot of momentum going in there. Rutgers content to let the clock run out, and Pete Carrill gives a little wave, and he has done it again. In 25 years of coaching, 24 at Princeton, Pete Carrill has now come up with, I believe, his 421st unofficially, but I'm sure Pete's not counting anymore. But this one is sweet. The in-state rivalry, 404th career win, okay. And he has Rutgers numbers, that's for sure, winning five of the last six. And Clark Kellogg's making his way downstairs, hopefully to get a chance to talk to Pete. And again, Princeton can do some funny things to you. Look what they did to Rutgers here. Lowest scoring game since a loss to Temple back in 1984. And actually, they would have been well below 39 points, except for some easy baskets that were given up at the end there as Princeton just came into this building, faced the 8,500 people, faced Rutgers, and as we set off the top, they made the Scarlet Knights play their way. We'll be back with some final thoughts here in just a minute. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball, Princeton and Rutgers. Brought to you by MasterCard. Now your most valuable card, thanks to Master Values. Look for Master Values at some of your favorite stores. By Chevy Trucks. More people are winning with the heartbeat of America. And by Michelob Dry Beer. Once you experience the bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back. Welcome back to the studio, everybody. Once again, Princeton beats Rutgers 58-45 to was the final score. Princeton moves to 7-0, and and keep in mind, Pete Carrill's uh, team has yet to play a game at home, and the Tigers have now beaten Rutgers five out of the last six times they have played. And Wednesday, they play UNLV on ESPN. Right now, let's head back to Piscataway and rejoin Mike Gorman. Mike? Okay, Bill, thanks very much. We said they were unique off the top, and indeed they are. The Princeton Tigers emerging with a 13-point win in a very hostile environment. We're going to find out how they do it, because Clark Kellogg's down on the floor with Pete Carrill and a couple of stars of the game. Clark? Thank you very much, Mike. I've got Kit Miller and Sean Jackson along with Coach Carrill here with me. Let me start with you, Kit. How important is this game? We talked about the rivalry during our broadcast. How, is, how important is it to you guys to come in here and win? Oh, it's a big win. It's, uh, you know, for the bragging rights in New Jersey, uh, both teams were undefeated. Uh, we're heading out to Vegas now. We wanted to be undefeated going out for that game, you know, to play the number one team in the nation. So it's, it's a big win. You came out here, the leading scorer, the leading rebounder, leading guy and assist on this team. What do you see as your role when you come out on the floor night in and night out? Well, I'm, you know, I'm the senior this year. I'm the captain, and uh, I've had the most experience running the offense. So I really just try to take control and, and, and dictate what's going to happen out there. All right, congratulations. Let me bring in Sean. Sean, you transferred from Ohio University. What's the difference in styles? Obviously, a weaving, passing game offense here. Compare that to what you went through at Ohio U. Well, right here, there's more emphasis on uh, passing and cutting rather than uh, getting shots off picks. Uh, right uh, as you can tell, most of our shots are off like backdoor cuts, or you know, even that leaves open for the three-pointer. So uh, that's probably the main difference. All right, thanks a lot for stopping in, and let's bring in the head coach now, Pete. You couldn't have diagrammed this any better. I may interrupt you a little bit. Uh, Sean's grandpa died on uh, Sean's grandpa died on Friday, and uh, he went to try to decide whether to go home and all. He was uh, he played a heck of a game under the stress 
that he played. I, I thought he was magnificent. And, and as I want to say to Sean's mom and dad, God bless you. Okay, thanks. Congratulations. Okay. Let's go back now to Bill Patrick. All right.